World geography, location, and geographic tools. What is geography? So we will be studying geography this year. Let's first get a good definition of it. So if you take a look at the screen, you'll see that the first picture that pops up is a globe. What that represents is the planet Earth. So geography, how does that tie into the definition for geography? Well, geography is the study of the planet Earth. It is also the study of all of the living things that inhabit the planet Earth, which include these people that you see. Um, not just people dressed like this, though. People who probably look like they're from the United States, like us. It's people from all over the world. This, the second graphic of people actually are people from India. Geography, though, is not just the study of people. It's the study of all living things, animals, everything that, make, uh, that lives in the planet Earth. And also the landforms in the earth. So you'll see this is a picture of a mountain. Um, geography, study of mountains, mountain ranges, um, weather, weather patterns, hurricanes, tornadoes, all of those things that occur within the planet Earth. So just to recap, geography is the study of the Earth's physical features and the living things that inhabit the planet. Now the word geography actually comes from the Greek and it actually translates roughly into meaning Earth's description. So that brings us to the question, how does how do geographers locate places? Well, first, before we answer this question, let's kind of let me explain to you what a geographer is. A geographer is anyone who studies the Earth or the living things that um, inhabit the Earth for a living. So that's what they do. If you guys think about Indiana Jones, and you know he went all over the world, he studied the Earth. Or if you just think about anyone on um, the census, I guess that is a way of studying the Earth. So anyone who studies the Earth or the living things that inhabit the Earth. This picture, the first picture that pops up, is a clue as to how the geographers locate places on the Earth. It is a map. It is a map of the entire world. And this second picture is also a map. It is actually a map of probably, of looks like a street or a street level. So follow my cursor, and I will explain to you how do geographers locate places. If you notice these lines that go across the map, across it, up and down. These are called grid lines, and these, this is called the grid system. Now, the grid system, what this is, these are the imaginary lines that are drawn onto globes and maps. Um, this is how geographers locate places, okay? Um, especially if you go back to, if we think about before, probably more than 30 years ago, before people had GPS systems, cell phones, all the things that we have today, MapQuest.com, People use mostly maps to get around, and the grid system was invaluable in helping people, especially uh, to find their way around the Earth. Now, the grid system was created by the early explorers, so taking us back to probably either second or fourth grade history, we learned about Leif Erikson and Americo Vespucci and Christopher Columbus. All of these guys, they didn't have the things that we have today as far as GPS. The only thing they had was a map, and they had to use the grid system to help them to navigate the world. Now, locating places on a map, the two sets of imaginary lines that you see on the globe, the name for those lines are lines of latitude or parallels and lines of longitude, which are called meridians. The way it's easy for me to figure out, is if you take a look at where my cursor is on the globe, the lines of latitude, when you think about latitude, you think about something moving laterally, they go across the earth. Laterally means moving side to side. When you think about lines of longitude, I think about something being long. And so lines of longitude, they move up and down the earth the long line, lengthwise. Locating places. Now this first graphic, what these, this graphic represents is that the Earth is actually divided into four hemispheres. Now, this is, taking a look at my cursor, this represents the first part, the shaded part is the northern hemisphere. The second shaded part that my cursor is now on represents the western hemisphere. The third part that it's on now is the southern hemisphere and the eastern hemisphere. And, of course, the first graphic is just another way of showing the northern southern, western, and eastern hemispheres. Hemispheres, what they are, they are half spheres. So the word hemi means half, sphere means circles. The earth is around almost a circular shape. Uh, they are half spheres. 
imagining the earth is divided by the imaginary lines at zero degrees latitude and zero degrees longitude. We will get into this a little bit more in a second. Just hold on with me. Now back to latitude, lines of latitude or parallels. They show distances measured in degrees north or south of the equator. Now what the equator is, we'll take this all the way back probably to fourth grade again. Follow my cursor. You'll see looking at the globe, this red line, this red imaginary line, this is the equator. It cuts the earth in half. It is an imaginary line that cuts the earth in half. It is located at zero degrees latitude. So once again, the equator is an imaginary line that is located at zero degrees latitude that divides the earth into the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Now, all lines of latitude that are north of the equator or above the equator, when you describe those lines, an N follows those degrees. So, for example, if we take a look at that first line, let's take a look at the equator. Let's find this cursor again. Okay, there's the cursor. The cursor is on the equator. The first line that is above the equator, for the purposes of our example, that would have a location of 20 degrees north. And for line south of the equator, an S follows the degree. So let's take a look again. Let's see if we can get this cursor to show up again. All right, so here's the equator. The first line underneath the equator, that would have, since it's underneath the equator, it would have a south behind it. So its measurement would be 20 degrees south. This diagram just gives us some important or prominent lines of latitude. 90 degrees lines of latitude that is the North Pole so I, if I recall correctly that's where Santa Claus is supposed to live right okay so the North Pole is 90 degrees north of latitude um, the northern hemisphere then at zero degrees latitude of course is the equator then the southern hemisphere and then the South Pole which is located on the opposite side of the earth as the North Pole and of course it is not then located at 90 degrees south latitude Finishing with lines of latitude, we're now on lines of latitude, which are also called meridians. So, lines of longitude. They show the distance measured in degrees east or west of the prime meridian. What is the prime meridian? Well, if we know what the equator is, the equator is an imaginary line that goes across the earth. The prime meridian is, let's see if I can get the cursor to show up. There it is. The prime meridian. Follow the cursor. It is an imaginary line that goes up and down the earth, okay? So, this is an example. Let me go back. This is an example of some, these two pictures show different lines of latitude and longitude. If you are locating places using lines of latitude or lines of longitude, I'm sorry. This graphic going across is what we just discussed is the equator. It's an, it is an imaginary line located at zero degrees latitude and going up and down the earth is the prime meridian. That is also another imaginary line and it is located at zero degrees longitude. Now what the prime meridian does, it divides the earth between the eastern and western hemisphere. It runs from the north pole to the South Pole, and it also, if you take a look at this line, it goes from the North Pole through Greenwich, England, through Africa, all the way down to the South Pole. We will touch back on why it is important that it goes through Greenwich, England in a moment. Now, the prime meridian circles the entire Earth. So it goes from the North Pole to the South Pole in one big circle. After it comes across the Earth on the South Pole, it changes its degrees from zero degrees to 180 degrees, and it com becomes the international date line. So the prime meridian on one side of the Earth, it is called the prime meridian. And on the other side of the Earth, once it circles on the other side of the Earth, it is called the international date line. Locating places using lines of longitude. For lines west of the prime meridian, a W follows uh, the degree or whenever we give the location for it. So taking a look, come on, cursor up here. There it is. Cursor is appearing. We're taking a look at this is the prime meridian. So all locations west of it. So if I want to find the location or the, the degree location for this line, because it is to the left of the prime meridian, 
it would be 20 degrees west. For lines east of the prime meridian or to the right of the prime meridian, okay, west is to the left, east is to the right, all of these lines to the east of the prime meridian and E follows the degree. So for an example, this first line that my cursor is on now, an example of that, its location would be 20 degrees east. Important lines of longitude. We see the prime meridian. We also see the western hemisphere to the left of the prime meridian and the eastern hemisphere to the right of the prime meridian. We finished with latitude and longitude, the equator, the prime meridian, and all of that good stuff. So now we are on absolute and relative location. The absolute location, what it is is this. It is an accurate or the exact position of a place that is located on the Earth's surface. So for example, if someone asked you what your address is or asked you where you live, what you would tell them, you can either look at a map and give them the coordinates where you live, or you can give them the address. That is the absolute location, okay, because that is exactly where you live. You can either get your, your lines of latitude and longitude, tell them where they are, where you live, or use your address. That is the absolute location. And for an example of that, if you said you lived at 20 degrees north latitude or 20 degrees east longitude, okay, now we're taking a look at for another example what we use on a map in a real world or another real world example would be Tokyo Japan taking a look at the picture on the right this shows us a representation of the absolute location for Tokyo it is 36 degrees north latitude and 140 degrees east longitude that is the exact location of Tokyo Japan Relative location. Relative location is different or the opposite of absolute location. When we say relative location, we mean that we are giving directions and we use the location of one place to describe another place. Relative location is often used when we give directions to one another for memory or when we're using landmarks. So an example of relative location. Let's go back to the address. If someone asks you where you live, instead of giving them the coordinates to your home or giving them your address, if you were giving someone the relative location of where you lived, you would say, um, I live north of Airline Highway, or I live down the street from Gonzales Middle. So you were using Gonzales Middle as a landmark, or I live just south of Central. And give an example of the relative location and a big map way is north of the equator. Or if we're looking at a country, we can say a country is east of the prime meridian. Locating places with the prime meridian, the relative, this brings us, um, I'm sorry, not the prime meridian, the equator. Taking a look, come on cursor, come on back. Okay, there's the cursor. So this cursor, this is important for the purposes of what we're discussing with the picture of the equator. If we're using the relative location, okay, if we wanted to find the relative location of the United States, we could use the equator. So if someone asked us what the relative location of the United States was, we can say this is the equator, this is the United States. The United States is located north of the equator. That would give us the relative location. That is the end of the notes for um, your homework today. Make sure you answer any questions that might have appeared in your homework. Please, though, remember, do not answer the questions in the black box. We would do that in class. Thank you.